Polls aren't everything when it comes to where candidates stand in the presidential race. I would argue that an even more accurate prediction can come from where people put their money, literally. And there is a serious betting market around the campaigns that show who's up and who's down. And more importantly, may better reflect the current trends. And one person who many seem to be increasingly betting on is Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. He was little known in the political arena until a few months ago, but now the political newcomer and businessman has climbed in the betting odds. Throughout the day, Ramaswamy has seen his second most likely choice for the 2024 GOP nomination, according to election betting odds, which compiles data from overseas betting companies and other prediction markets. Ramaswamy has gone back and forth with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for that second spot, which is astounding when you think about how much media DeSantis has gotten. Now, as of tonight, DeSantis leading again at 9.9, Ramaswamy 9.6, and Trump still dominating the field at about 70. But again, the numbers are switching constantly. And I'll admit, I would have thought the betting odds for Trump would be even higher than 70 percent. Ramaswamy's jump in the Republican nomination comes as the governor's campaign appears to be foundering with a new campaign manager announced this morning and his biggest donor threatening to cut off funds to DeSantis' presidential campaign over what he called his extremist policies. Ramaswamy, the son of Indian immigrants, has painted himself as a sort of Trump-loving GOP candidate, someone who embraces anti-wokeness, a government skeptic, a nationalist. He's clearly doing something right as he climbs in the polls and the betting odds, beating out political veterans like Mike Pence and Nikki Haley and others. Joining me now is Republican presidential candidate Vivek, Vivek Ramaswamy. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. So congratulations on your recent surge. Do you think part of this is due to the fact that the DeSantis campaign appears to be falling apart? I think it has less to do with other campaigns and the distinctiveness of my message. We have a lot of conservatives who have for a long time been running from something. I am in this race to start leading us to something, to our own vision of what it means to be an American. And I think people across this country are so hungry for purpose and meaning and identity that we can't just criticize the failed Biden agenda. That gets old. Mm, okay. The Republican Party sounds like a bunch of partisan hacks. What I'm doing in this race is I'm actually offering an affirmative vision of national sure. identity itself. And I think that's what's moving. Well, people. let's let's talk about that, because I've been trying to figure out how your positions differ from Donald Trump's. I, you've talked about your age. You've talked about the fact that this is the next generation. I get all that. But when people are deciding between you and Donald Trump, you know, be specific. How are your views or your policies yep. different from Donald Trump's? Well, in certain cases, I'm going further than Trump did. I don't believe in just putting Betsy DeVos on top of the Department of Education and telling her to figure it out. I've said that I will shut down the U.S. Department of Education, which should not have existed. Building the wall was a fine first step, but there are now cartel-financed tunnels underneath that wall that trucks are driving through today. I've said that I would use the U.S. military to secure that southern border. So I've been very specific in going further than Trump. But the truth of the matter is, Trump and I are deeply aligned in most, not all, but nearly all policy areas. I think the difference is I'm 37 years old. I've got fresh legs. I'm not yet tired and cynical and really drained by the swamp. And I think the hard fact is about 30 percent of this country becomes psychiatrically deranged, ill, when he is in office. That's not even his fault, but it's just a fact. And I'm not having that effect on people, which will allow me to both go further with our agenda, but also unite the country in the process. And that's something that Trump, myself, and our entire base cares deeply about. I just think I'm going to be able to take it further. A, a, a lot of people have said um, the fact that, you know, you constantly talk about how supportive you are of the Trump agenda, et cetera. You talk about your age being the key distinguishing factor, that effectively you're running for vice president, right? That that's what you're looking at here. Fair? Unfair and, un and inaccurate. Actually, <laughs> Trump and I share something in common. I think neither of us makes for a very good number, too. I haven't reported into somebody for a very long time, and I don't intend to change that. <laughs> so, you, so you, you know, look, it's you my wouldn't expectation take it. you wouldn't that take I will it. win. You wouldn't take yeah. it if he offered it to you? I wouldn't take it. So, all right. So No, but right. I, I, think, I think what he would take 
is it because he's a patriot is that when I'm the next president of the United States, I think he'll be my most important advisor and mentor mm -hmm. in terms of understanding where the body's buried in that administrative state. I want to learn from his experience. He and I have a deep mutual respect for one another, and I fully expect as somebody who has been in those shoes before, he'll sort of graduate to a phase of his life where he can provide advice to the next generation to take the agenda forward. That's but the way to, I see it. To be clear, it's a hard no if he offers you the vice president position. I don't do well in a number two. So I'd be about as likely to accept it as he would be to accept my offer to be my vice president. That's what I think. So it's a no or it's a kind of no? It's a no. All right, I've said right. it many times. <laughs> but but, I, I but my know. offer for him to be my ad advisor I, or mentor in that it. office stands. Yep. Look, you try and talk straight to people. I try and do the same thing. That's why I'm uh, trying to, to sure. clarify. Let me, let me switch topics here. Uh, you've said that you would pardon uh, Trump if elected president. You think it's best for the country. I think even, by the way, someone on the left might agree with that. They'd say after a conviction, et cetera. But putting aside the legal outcome, would you agree, for example, on the, on the documents case that disregarding a federal subpoena, showing off highly sensitive classified documents would be wrong? I would have made very different judgments than Trump did. After all, I am running in the same race that he is for the presidency. But I think the deeper danger is criminalizing every bad judgment. And for technical legal reasons that we could go into if you want to, I've done it elsewhere and in the Wall Street Journal and otherwise, yeah. this is not a crime. I think they are what? politicizing what was, I think, in my opinion, not a judgment that I would have made. Now, over the weekend, uh, you implied that U.S. involvement in the war in Ukraine is be maybe because of Hunter Biden. Um, do you really believe that the U.S. aid, which is debatable, by the way, a totally legitimate, debatable issue, but supported by a majority of Congress, supported by the administration beyond just Joe Biden, really has anything to do with Hunter Biden? I think it is a very legitimate question to ask. When you have a rare historical instance of a U.S. president's son, when he was then the vice president, receiving a $5 million bribe well, from a private company, but whose owner was affiliated well, well, with we the don't national know. security wait, wait, establishment but, Ukraine. But you know that hasn't, you, you know I think that it's that a legitimate totally question to ask. Right, right, no, questions are one thing, but it is totally unverified about the bribes. There's a lot of stuff that Hunter Biden did that's verified. The business about the bribes is not just unverified, it's actually, you know, very often, many with knowledge of it are suggesting it's just not true. There are no texts. There are no Look, uh, audio tapes, that, as we're claiming, et cetera. So, so suggesting it's sort here's of this fact, right, is, is troubling. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is if, if it is true oh, that it, Burisma it. made a $5 million right. payment to Hunter right. Biden, which there is strong suggestive evidence of, and this is important enough that we have a media, and I think the media has accountability here well, in not being curious enough to get to the bottom of no, it. No, no, look. Get I, to the bottom of that question, and if that's true, if that's true, then I think it is a legitimate question to ask if that influences well, his father's well, policy decisions on sending aid to that country. And if the same shoe fit the other foot, yep. if this had been Ivanka Trump and Donald Trump, there is no doubt in my mind that this would be a media firestorm. The same shoe fit the other foot. Ask yourself what the media reaction right. would be. So, That's what it should be right now. So, so totally fair. If it were true, if he got a $5 million bribe, I would say we shouldn't just be asking questions. If Joe Biden got the $5 million bribe that was alleged, it's more than just asking questions. Then we got to really be talking about serious corruption in government. Totally agree with you on that. But you say, you know, if this happened... And the reason... Well, but again, you say if this happens, the reason Ivanka, we need to be talking about this. But I do t look. I, the reason we need to be talking about this is very clear. I just want to be very clear about one yeah, thing because there's also one important factor. Please, here. Yeah. But you asked the question, what if this happened with Ivanka Trump or Jared Kushner? And yet there were allegations of influence peddling, right, with Ivanka Trump that I don't think there should be an investigation over, right? She gets trademarks from China. Yeah, because China. we're not giving $200 billion well, of taxpayer aid to a country that does not advance our national interests. Well, that is what makes this an actual well, relevant story. All right, well, how about this then? How about the fact that after Ivanka Trump gets trademarks from China, Donald Trump changes U.S. policy with regard to a major Chinese energy company and stops sanctions on that company. Again, I'm not saying there was wrongdoing. I'm not suggesting, aha, you see? But I'm saying if you're gonna play the investigative game, there you're actually seeing a change in policy by Donald Trump about I'm playing China. the game of getting to truth. 
I agree. So here's, here's, and, and I appreciate the discussion. Let yeah. me just get to the bottom line here. Please. We are actively spending hundreds of billions of dollars of U.S. taxpayer money now, sending military equipment, potentially marching closer to nuclear war to protect an invasion against somebody else's border mm -hmm. when we can't even protect against the invasion on our own southern right. border. So this is a clear and present it, issue relating to national security now that it, I believe could be it, very well related to making good on a bribe of the president's see, son. That, that, Absolutely, that is a relevant question we should be talking about. Yeah, and again, Everything you said up to the final point, I think was completely legitimate, right? This is a lot of money going to a foreign country over yeah. a foreign war. It is a legitimate question, and, and you've been one of the most same... outspoken about it. But then when you yes. link it to, well, I think it could be connected to this bribe where there's no evidence of it, it suddenly becomes a little less credible and less serious, no? Well, I think it should be. I think it should be credible, and I understand where you're coming from because that's the mainstream narrative. Let's not a, forget it's not a narrative. That this very. It, let's not forget. I follow let evidence me, Let's and not facts. forget that this very. Let me. Let me finish. Please. Let me finish. Let me give you a hard piece of evidence that you will remember as a reporter. Okay. Let's not forget that that same scandal was the basis for the second impeachment of the 45th president of the United States. The relationship of supposedly pressuring Ukraine to suppress this investigation right. or, or promote this investigation was the basis for an for, was the basis for an impeachment. So Hunter Biden has been a geopolitical disaster already. But, he has already those behaviors well, have resulted in the impeachment of a former U.S. president. But now it is the same country to whom. Yeah. And by the way, here's what we do know. Wait, $5 wait. million dollars to one side or not. Hunter Biden had no expertise to sit no on the board about of an that. energy company. No doubt about what it. What the heck is he doing? No doubt about it. Sitting on the board of Burisma. He was selling his so name. So that alone warrants an investigation. Using There's no his doubt name. about it. Look, right? I have no problem with the investigation. Selling his name, using his name, using the Biden name, totally unqualified. Agree with you on all of that. To a no country should... that's getting $200 right. billion dollars but, but again, of our but, money but then you right mentioned, now. You that's why it's relevant. The, you mentioned the impeachment as if it's somehow related to Hunter Biden. I mean, Donald Trump was asking it the Ukrainians to, to open an investigation that they didn't have into his political opponent. I mean, that is, when, regardless of whether it's impeachable, it's not a good thing to do, no? At a time, at a time when Hunter Biden is sitting on the board of yeah, a but, company whose but, owner is part of Ukraine's National that. Security Council. So my question is, why is it, here's my question. If yes. we're sending 200, 300 billion dollars of taxpayer money yes. to another country, and there are credible allegations that there are financial relationships between a state-affiliated company and the son of the U.S. president, yep. whether it's $5 million or a board seat. Yep. At least the board seat is well known. Yep. We should be getting to the bottom of that. Yep. And it is shameful that we have a media and a political establishment that focuses on, on sweeping under the rug yeah. when a presidential candidate says it, that that's not credible versus actually getting to the bottom of the truth. One final question on that, which is, would you apply, you, you asked me the same question, I'm gonna turn it on you. Would you apply that same standard to Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner if you can show that there was real potential influence peddling, would you be asking and are you asking the same questions? If we're in the middle of whoever the U.S. president is, Republican or Democrat or independent or libertarian, I could care less. If that U.S. president is using taxpayer money to make good on potential private dealings, mm -hmm. that is a violation of the highest order. Fair enough. And I could care less if Joe Biden were Republican or Democrat. That's what we have to do to stand on principle. That's where I'm at on it. All right. Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you so much for this conversation. I really appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to having it again. It's important to have. And again, congratulations on your continued uh, success in this campaign. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. News Nation is set to host the first presidential town hall with Republican candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Leland Vittert hosts live from Chicago on Monday with live audiences in Chicago, Iowa, and New Hampshire. Coming up, a video of a Las Vegas police officer seemingly agreeing.